Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. I'm Mike Zenker, and I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Growing in Grace Ministries Canada and Hope Fellowship, your community church, invite you to enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. Good morning and welcome to Still Growing in Grace. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had a program. I took some time off for some holidays and uh, it's been really, really good. Um, today, I want to share with you something that um, was shared at Hope Fellowship on Sunday morning. Um, I thought the Still Growing in Grace community would get great value out of hearing this conversation. Um, we've had a, a friend, Robinson Sadiq, and his family come join us in Canada several times. Um, this was a connection through Grace Walk Ministries, and uh, he's spoken and shared his heart, um, brought his family. Um, he's been sharing grace since, uh, well, I think the last 13 years in Pakistan. And it became a problem in the last little while. In fact, I, I thought it was not too long ago, but it's been 10 months now, as you'll hear in the, in the conversation. But they've gone through a brutal time. And it made me ponder what we here in the West, uh, when we talk about our freedoms, when we talk about our rights and freedoms, I don't think we have a clue what we're talking about. I think we have uh, entitlements, not so much rights uh, and the entitlements are the things we demand and again I've just okay if I if I do a rabbit trail to this if we're gonna go down the trail of rights and freedoms um, I, I think we need to take a look at Christ we need to take a look at who Jesus is the message he gave um, how would he have uh, looked at rights and freedoms and he modeled it for us. And here, here's the thing. He gave up his rights and freedoms. He just did. So for us to demand ours, um, sometimes it's great to stand up for injustice. I get that. But this, this theme that we've heard in the last couple of years of um, rights and freedoms, Look, we have freedoms, and one of the greatest ones right now in our North American society is freedom of religion in many ways. Now, some will say, well, I don't quite have my freedom. Well, you do, compared to some countries where you cannot properly share, either none at all, or it's controlled sharing. And Robinson found out that um, as the message began to grow, his life was put into danger. And so... I want to share with you the journey of them having to come to North America um, under threat of death. They were going to have their lives taken out. Um, and so their whole family was uprooted. Um, I love this family. They're amazing. And so um, uh, make sure you listen to the very end. When we're finished the interview, I want to come back on and I want to uh, give a suggestion and invite you to do something with me on this. But uh, I'll tell you after at the end. So let's let's dive in, take a look, and listen to this this family share who they are, their love for Christ, and uh, what it's like, the cost of sharing good news in Pakistan. Here we go. All right. Uh, hello, Robinson and family. Robinson, will you please introduce your family to everyone? Hope Fellowship has met you a long time ago, but we've had new people that have come to Hope Fellowship and won't know you at all. So could you introduce your family to us real quick, and then we'll dive into your story. Hi, guys. Uh, Hope Fellowship people, my brothers and sisters. My name is Robinson Sadik, and uh, this is my wife, Goshia. Hello. My son, Joshua. And my beautiful daughter Sable. Yeah, and, perfect. Uh, I'm 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 a real brother uh, from an other <laughs> mother. From an other mother, uh, <laughs> Michael is my dear brother, and a uh, lot of your uh, whole fellowship people knows me and very close to my heart. I love it. You are a brother from a different mother, that's for sure. And uh, it's been really fun getting to know you over the years, um, hearing your story. 
I've told Hope Fellowship a little bit about your ministry in Pakistan, but the story that has got us surprised and praying for you even more is you having to leave Pakistan. And I just want to, I'm going to ask Sable first, just to see what did you, what was it like for you being told you got to leave? What, what were the emotions and Yashua, same thing. What were the emotions you guys were facing? Cause this is your home country. Well, I was totally petrified. Um, there were so many things going on in my mind, but as my father was telling us what to do, we were doing that. Um, we had to hide for like two weeks at uh, my cousin's place. And he wasn't telling us what was going on, but somewhere we knew that things are not going good. So, but we weren't asking him because we know that because he was already in so much tension. He was taking so much stress that we didn't wanted him to, you know, uh, think about that. We're also going through a lot of, you know, things or we're also in, you know, sorry, I can't explain Thanks. it in words, but. That's fine. Do you, you're doing great. Yeah, but it was, I've, I've never gone through things like this before in my life. It was. Wow. How how did you observe your family handling this? Like, obviously, you're having a hard time putting into words, but what did you see of your brother and your parents? Well, they're very strong people. <laughs> uh, but this thing has um, mentally disturbed us a lot. Um, I'm sorry. All right, Yashua, you can jump in if you got... No gulp yeah. in your throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for a lot of months, we were like trying to process what happened because yeah, things happen to Christian people in Pakistan, but what was happening to us was like really rare. It was like we were specifically targeted for something really, really big. They thought my dad was an American Asian trying to convert Muslims into Christian. That was not the deal. He was wow. just spreading, he was just spreading the word. He was just spreading the love gospel. That's all we've done for like 12 years now. Yeah. With the ministry. And it was a lot. It was a lot for all of us, especially on my mom and my sisters. And of course, me and my dad, too. Yeah, my dad. I mean, I was, we were just, you know, for so many months, it was like, it was like, a, I'm sorry, I cannot explain, but like, it was really hard. It was like our whole life kind of changed. What was happening was like so terrifying. And when I, I don't like thinking about it because the more I think about it, the more it kind of eats me from the inside, you know. Is this is this what's going on right now by talking about it like we are? Is this triggering some of those emotions and memories? Yeah, it does. It kind of brings back those flashbacks, you know. But but like but like we're not afraid of sharing this. Like we're not afraid, but like, if you're asking me, I won't be like, no, I, I don't want to share this with you. Of course I do. Well, I yeah, only to. share what you're allowed to. That's I want to, cause you need to be safe, but so do relatives and people back in Pakistan. So you want to be careful. Yeah. Goshia, like, see, yeah. you're having a hard time there. Yeah. How was it for you? You're trying to hold everybody together, weren't you? Yeah. Robinson taught, never told me. I, but I know in three months, is very depressions. He never talked to me, but I know. And one day, uh, Yeshua and uh, <clears throat> Robinson, you know, fire in the car. So I feel so bad. I can't explain all. Yeah. <laughs> very hard time. Yeah. So I heard that you had to sell everything quite quick and get over here quick. Is that kind of what happened? Robinson, do you want to kind of tell us a little bit about what happened there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to talk much about this anymore. That's okay. I just, I just want to, whatever's comfortable for you. Thanks, Koshia. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes words cannot describe what what the things are. You know. So, and uh, we we cannot. I I only sell my car over there. Nothing else because I leave my house almost twenty days before when I leave. Wow. Everything is over there. My refrigerator, my air condition, my clothes, everything is over there. My whatever you have in your house, everything I leave behind. Except I sell my car and and purchase uh, air tickets. Wow. And uh, that's all. And you were blessed to have a visa well yeah. before this all happened. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I'm... So blessed that uh, COVID is almost uh, finished in those days. So the flights were open. Otherwise, I cannot fly if, if this happens in 2019. <laughs> yeah. So I was stuck. And uh, unfortunately, I never move. If I move in within the Pakistan, it's... Uh, no matter because all over the Pakistan I was we was not safe because they have uh, great connections and uh, you know the uh, everywhere you can go everywhere in Pakistan uh, the Taliban's and the radicals are there and uh, even. Uh, in my case, actually, you know, uh, from last 12 years, I preach gospel, gospel of grace. And uh, normally, that was my practice that I go to different churches and share message and uh, just just post uh, my, my pictures on Facebook, mm-hmm. not the man. But due to COVID, Churches, buildings were closed, so I never go anywhere. So then I start online message. So I was so thankful that when I go to church, the, the sometimes there is a, a forty people, hundred people, fifty people. But when I share online, the the views were increase tremendously. Mm-hmm. You know. 500, 1,000, 1,200 people. But uh, the other side is my page was open and and the Muslim and everyone can see what I share. So there is a good part and some <laughs> the bad part, yeah. But uh, I never ever, because this is not my teaching, this is not Christianity. I never ever preach against any religion, mm-hmm. any religion. And uh, even, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a grace preacher. I never talk about religion. I'm mm-hmm. always here, love and life of Jesus Christ and grace. And uh, always my, my, my message is that Jesus loves all, all, not only Christians, all. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, atheist, Christians, Pentecostals. Even them. <laughs> yeah. Jesus love all. But, uh, but, uh, but there is no doubt. I also share that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. He is the son of God. Like we, like we, we were surprised at how bold you were. Like, I know Pakistan's not a safe country, but you, you didn't seem scared either. You, were you naive or did you just boldly preach and share as you thought was careful or cause it's, that, that's a question people w- would ask, you know, like, were you scared at any one point before this or did it suddenly happen pretty quick? No, this is not the first time things that happens with me. You know, uh, I, I, I changed my uh, SIM card, uh, you know, the dozens of times. <laughs> I got thread calls. Uh, 
since since the uh, 2012. Yeah, because you had you had um, Craig and uh, Reg come to visit you there. Exactly, and, and they it, said they were never more scared in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we are dealing with, uh, in a regular basis. <clears throat> but you know, uh, uh, even uh, you know, I, I tell I tell you one story. One of my friend is Muslim friend. I have a lot of Muslim friends. Uh, I I grown up with them and I study with them. And one of my friends said, Robinson, what you think about Muhammad? Mm. And I I said, I love Muhammad. Really, Robinson? Are you Christian? I said, Yeah, I am Christian. I love Muhammad, but why? Because my Jesus loved all, and he was a man, and my Jesus loved him too. I'm not talking about his teaching, I'm not talking about his philosophy, his rules. I'm just saying that God loved the whole world and he gave his son for the world, and Jesus Christ gave his life for the world for all humanity, for all mankind. So he was a man and my Jesus loved him too and he died for him too. So, uh, and he was surprised and he said, Robinson, I never heard this answer before. Why do you think he never heard that answer before? Because when... I'm, I'm I'm fishing here. I'm 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 looking for a certain answer because I think the Christian Church has messed it up. Yeah, yeah. Right? They make it us versus them, and this person finally hears for the first time that this Jesus is for everyone. Everyone, exactly. And you know that man uh, last uh, before I leave Pakistan. That man saved my life. Wow! What happened? Uh, somebody asked him to invite me somewhere. Uh, and those are the, uh, you know, radicals, mullahs. And uh, he knew that something is going wrong because he knows those people. And he was amazed that, why are you inviting my friend to that place? Uh, do you know him? And he said, yeah, yeah, we know him. He's a preacher and this and that. And he refused to invite me over there in front of them. And, you know, and uh, he dodged them and he was beaten badly, badly. He was near to death. Wow. But he, he called me and, and, and said, Robinson, leave your home immediately. They are, uh, they are, uh, they are after you. They're coming after you. Yeah, they're coming after you. Leave your home. I said, what happened? He said, don't ask any question. Just leave your home right now. Now, was there a, were you and Yashua were together at one point just before this? Were you, were you guys, did that shooting happen before that? Yes. Yes. And I was amazed. Why, why me? Uh, because I never done anything wrong. But when I, uh, 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 connect the whole, whole, whole events and things. Then the picture was clear that, yeah, that's the plan, and uh, it's it's time to move. It's time to do something. Otherwise, uh, I was lucky. Me and Yeshua was lucky at that day. Otherwise, the story was finished on that day. Exactly. Yeah. So even I, I thought. And I, from the day one, when, when I start preaching and, and, and know Christ that when he died, we died, and now we are living his life. We are already died in Jesus Christ. We, we all believe this. And I said, whatever is happened, I'm ready to die. No problem. But don't hurry it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, when, when I deeply thinking, and about the whole scenario and the things, then I realized that if I die and uh, if the radicals tells me that I am a blasphemer, then what happened after me? What happened after me with my, with my daughter, with my family? Yeah. 
they will kill them too or might be convert to islam or you know the the land was immediately shrink for my family in pakistan it's, uh, so uh, uh, then i realized i don't i don't want to show brave i'm i'm brave enough no problem but i have to leave. i have to leave for my family for myself and and i were and you I able, were, were you able to know. were you able to tell them enough tell your family enough of why did they have to wonder why or did they really know why well, yeah okay. they know the only only reason is uh, two reasons uh, first i'm a preacher and i preach very boldly i'm not uh, uh, mixing the things law and anything and mm -hmm. uh, you know politics and uh, i i just share what the message is simple uh, some people are so glad and so blessed and uh, love my message and some people don't like my message some people love me some people really don't like me or maybe what <laughs> that's not my problem i yeah. i i have heard the true and transparent message and uh, this is not my job this is who i am now yeah and uh, um and the second thing is uh, my ministry is based on america it's american ministry so uh, you know the after uh, uh the when uh, what uh, when the israel uh, palestine israel uh, attack to israel you know just uh, one and a yep. half year ago from the gaza okay you know the all sentiments of the muslim in all over the world are different now they are they are totally in pakistan especially the muslims mind is that uh, america is totally support to israel which is not wrong yeah he support israel america support israel all the christian world so uh, the sentiments of the muslim people are they hate america wow they hate america and then when the americans uh, withdrawal from the afghanistan just a year ago so now the uh uh you yeah, the taliban and the political religious parties uh, uh show their anger to the christians they cannot do anything to to america or to israel but they uh, they pressure pressurize the pakistani christians yeah so this not only me a lot of christian people in pakistan suffered from this scenario when if anyone uh make a cartoon in 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 france or switzerland against muhammad they burned the churches in pakistan wow because they cannot do anything to the france or or, or anyone else they burn and uh, and 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 beat people in pakistan so the con the the masses in rape every year i'm telling you brother from last from from last five six years more than more more than uh 500 girls in a year christian girls raped in pakistan more than more than a thousand girls uh uh uh, uh are kya bolte hain usko utha lena ko bolte kya kidnap kidnap in pakistan and they convert convert into islam more than and uh, well, i remember when we first met you you were talking about yashua and sable having to walk together because of the quick kidnappings that happened you you guys had to watch carefully so that you guys weren't taken right yeah they, they never go outside in pakistan especially oh, yeah. yeah never ever this never must ever. be so never different ever. living where you are now then you know in pakistan not only girls the boys young boys are not safe especially christians wow 
they do a bad things with the boys. Wow. And uh, they think that I'm, I'm related to the American organization and I'm a preacher. So there is a big pressure on me. Yep. They thought I'm an American agent or maybe <laughs> am I six or <laughs> or and uh, my I, I, they thought my uh, my agenda or my mission is not to preach gospel. My mission and my agenda is to uh, uh, preach against Islam and convert Muslim people into Christianity. I never, I never ever preached like that to conversion yeah. or this. No. But you just, they, you've only you've always preached the love and, of Christ. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you know, not one, two uh, Muslim uh, um, uh, clerics, the high preachers, give orders against me that uh, uh, my murder is legal. Yeah, yeah. We call in Pakistan in Urdu fatwa. They give fatwa. They give orders to anyone who killed Robinson, he will be uh, honored and yeah. got a lot of, lot of money. Wow. So I went to the police station, to the political parties to do something and I, 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 I need a safety, but no, nobody is interested on my, my story. So do you, do you have hope now where you are? Like, are you, I know coming uh, uh, and getting away from the exact direct threat of, of having your life taken. What's it like right now for you guys trying to find new footing, creating a new life? Because Joshua had dreams, Sable had dreams, um, your wife had dreams, and now it, everything changes, like learning a new culture, everything. Like, what's going on with you guys? Are you in school, Yashua, or is Sable in school? In, yeah, I am going to school right now. And uh, how old are you? I'm 17 right now. Man, I know. <laughs> I was, I was a little, I was really small when I met you. I know. Yes. Yeah. I remember the scrawny little kid, but you had a big yeah. smile. You had the permagrin. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to school, and um, for a lot of months, things were really really difficult for me because I knew nobody except Papa and everyone yeah. and um, my family. But I, I was, I was glad that I was safe. But when, when we moved to this house, I started school. I went to school, met a lot of people. Then for me, things started getting a little bit normal. I felt normal because I was in that kind of trauma. I was in anxiety for so long, not only me, all of us. And processing through that thing took a lot of months, but you know, God's always with us, watching over us. That's a great thing. Things turned around and we feel normal. We feel safe. We live in a nice neighborhood. My parents don't got to worry about me, you know, like someone trying to kill me or trying to bully me or that I can't be alone outside for too long. I can go outside, play with my friends and things start getting normal, you know, for me. So thank God. I thank God every day for it. For you know, watching over us, like blessing us with a lot of things. Even though we got even through even though we like went through a lot, you know, things always take take time, but like mm -hmm. everything is normal now. Yeah, for us. Well, so when you guys got here, were you like exhausted mentally and yes, just just yeah. worn out? Yeah, we were we were yeah. 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 It, uh. Things did got a little better when we saw Craig Snyder at the airport and we saw him <laughs> that we were like like thank god someone's here someone's here yeah so he's just been with us through everything yeah so we felt we we felt safe with him when we came here we, we, we were still scared because we didn't know if they follow us all the way here mm. but but yeah who we met a lot of people and we met a lot of people everyone was telling us that we are safe they're not going to come over here and we prayed about that every day that we you know that god please make us safe be safe and yeah. Or maybe they deport us. I mean, yeah, they <laughs> deport us. I mean. Well, we're praying, we're praying that the paperwork goes through. Your dad was telling me a little bit uh, before we started recording that the legal work takes forever 
and they just submitted this huge, huge stack of papers just, just to make things happen. So we're, we're praying for you guys and hope fellowship prays for you. We love you. We love that you're involved with us remotely with music. Uh, honestly, we love that. It just means so much, you know, and then hello whenever you can. Cause I think you guys are doing another service same time. Mine's on. So you can't stay and watch the whole thing. I know that. Um, but the fact you jump in and say hello, and then that just, it just means a lot. So thank you for that. And also, uh, Michael, I, uh, this is my special request to you and for uh, whole fellowship to uh, keep us in your praise uh, for our uh, legal status. You know, so we are waiting for our social security number. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been uh, almost 10 months. and. Uh, 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 before I told you that our lawyer just a month ago submit our case, even I, I, I provide everything almost a seven, eight months ago. And, uh, but it's a long process. And uh, uh, I'm thankful that uh, already I got my salary, what, what Grace Walk gave me in Pakistan. But you know the exchange rate when when that money go to the Pakistan it's a lot of money. <laughs> but mm -hmm. here, oh no. my God, America is very very expensive, <laughs> very expensive. Try coming yeah. to Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's worse and, here. <laughs> you know, but yeah, my finances are very few. Yeah, and uh, so I, and uh, I cannot work right now because I don't have. Uh, social security number if i do work that was illegal and, and i don't want to no not right now no uh, so um, uh, keep us in your prayers that god will uh, uh, provide uh, finances and everything at least till when i get your own I, footing yep. yeah exactly yeah and i'm i'm really uh, appreciate and thankful uh, Ron and Shannon, mm. you know, they are blessed. Yeah, yes, yeah, they, they are. are blessing and uh, uh, I have no words that uh, what can I say for them, but uh, uh, day and night, every day, I'm grateful for them and thankful for them. And uh, uh, tell your people, Michael, if, if Lord put in their hearts, if Lord, I'm not asking, and never ever, you know me, uh, more than a decade uh, I never asked for this but uh, if your people if Lord put in their mind keep us in your prayers and if Lord say to them to do something do mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know uh, uh, when I came here almost 10, 10 months I, I, I heard about the redwood trees in America <laughs> The redwood trees in, you know, in, in mostly in California. You know. so redwood trees, their 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 roots are uh, deep in the soil, and and also uh, the bound each other, their roots. So some of the trees are near to soil and the water, and some are so far, but they provide and help each other. Those mm -hmm. trees. And redwood trees have a long life, long, long life. So, uh, as a Christian, as as a brother in Christ, uh, this is what what I've done my whole life in Pakistan. Even uh, uh, I got support from Canada and America, but I support many, many, many people in Pakistan. Many people, and uh, yeah. Are you still are you still teaching and ministering to people in Pakistan? Exactly, exactly. online, yep. online, and I, 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 I preach more boldly because now I'm I'm I'm, I'm in yes. the state, so there is no boundaries and there is no wall between me. Yeah, so I'm thankful the technology, internet, and everything that uh, still I'm I'm preaching teaching. Uh, and a uh, lot of people are in my con uh, contact uh, from Pakistan and India and wherever the people are speaking Urdu, yeah. they are in my group. Yeah, That's incredible. 
Would you mind if I shifted the conversation towards what has got you most excited about uh, about Jesus? What what is the one thing you want to share to people? Because people can hear your story and go, "Well, you must be really angry at somebody. There must be people you can't stand now." But we've been talking about forgiveness for a long time, and somebody asked me to ask you, "How does forgiveness look to you?" coming from a very hostile country, coming to America, what's your perspective? How do you talk about forgiveness with people? Like, uh, is it a struggle for you? Is it, I'll just let you share. Cause I, I'm, I'm just go from your heart here on this. Cause I, I really want to hear. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, forgiveness for me, as per my understanding, you know, forgiveness is, Start from the cross. Hmm. You know, the Lord said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And this is before he died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On the cross. And uh, this is the exactly teaching and preaching and correct words. Those people who want to kill me, they don't know what they do. They are... Uh, uh, what I'm saying that they heard a wrong message. They, they grow up in a wrong culture uh, and they have no idea what they, what they are doing. Even the terrorists, even the Taliban's, uh, that is, you know, the, uh, somebody feed their mind in a wrong way. Uh, when, one fine day, and I pray for them that Lord uh, show them the real thing and show them his love, then they will realize that uh, they are on the wrong path. So, uh, forgiveness is not just a uh, uh, Forgiveness is not just a, a, some kind of method or, or, or a formula. It's, it's from, from the heart. And uh, we cannot or somebody cannot forgive anyone until unless they repent. We need to change their mind. When then, then you know, 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I read the same book, Bible. But I was thought something else. Hmm. Then Lord show me the lens of grace, the grace lens. Then the same verses, same books, same chapters, show me the another story. No. No. So <laughs> it's, it's totally the black is gone white and white is gone black. What's with that? <laughs> so it's, it's all up, up to here and from, from the heart. The thing is how you see the things, how, how you receive the things and the blessing and the message. So for me, the forgiveness is, is, is a blessing. Forgiveness mm. is a blessing. For who? For all. For all. Because Jesus forgave the whole world, mm. the whole people, not only who, who was just over there when Jesus was going to crucify the whole world. I know we've talked about the idea of when we forgive, we're actually, we're the ones who actually benefit because we're releasing, right? We're not hanging on any longer. So it's real forgiveness of someone else is for us. And the fruit of that, the benefits, incredible. Yeah, exactly. When, when you forgive someone uh, before him, you got the relief and, 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 and comfort and uh, relaxation and peace of mind. Uh, forgiveness is a blessing, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. So what is, what is the... 
one or two things that um, when you're when you're teaching in Pakistan, what were some of the aha things that you shared that made people light up and go what or oh my goodness I didn't know this what just give me an idea of what what was heard that was so different. Everything, brother. Hmm. Everything. Everything. Grace message is <clears throat> this is the most beautiful message in the whole world. And powerful message. You know, when, when, I, when, when I shared that, uh, uh, like, uh, faith, I'm talking about faith, and people said, oh, like, this is faith. <laughs> and uh, when you say rapidly, rapidly, and this is faith, no, this is, I don't know what, what is that, but faith is a person. Mm. And faith is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. It's not like a hidden thing you have to go search out? Exactly. exactly. The people thought that, uh, you know, the, uh, my life and your life and other life and his life is terrible. And my... Life is a Jesus. Hmm. Life is a personality. His name is Jesus Christ. Like love. Love is not a thing. Love is God. And, you know, I believe and always preach this, that this is a very famous phrase that uh, God is so good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. The very the beautiful thing is, where is God? Mm. God is in us. So, we are good all the time. Hmm. And all the time, we are good. That must be hard for people to hear and believe. Yeah. So, so many people amazed. They 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 blow their mind in a good way. <laughs> yeah. And they said, oh, yes. And some people said, this, this is, I think, he's antichrist. <laughs> How can I antichrist? Is, is this, this message is antichrist message? I sure the, uh, I share that everything is Jesus and he loves you unconditionally. I'm, I, I never promote that don't go to the church and go to the bars and everywhere. I never ever preach this, but I said Jesus love even those people who go to everywhere or, or, or who go to church and Jesus love those people who never go to church. So you mean God doesn't love you more if you go to church? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this was the message, you know, that mostly people share. Yeah. But exactly things that we are the church. We are the church. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, well, I never I never ever preach against church. No, I I went to church. I grown up in church. I and, and the church buildings, church congregations are the beautiful things that people are gathered together and share each other. What, what they have problems and what they have blessings. And this is the good thing. Mm -hmm. But if you said that Jesus lives in that building, so th that, that, is, that is wrong. Jesus lives in us. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We are, we are the holy place. Exactly. exactly. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm, I am thankful you took time. Thank to you, brother. Share. And I got to see your family again. It was so awesome. I'm, I just got I'm thankful that you gave me this opportunity to share my heart with you. And yeah. yeah. And anytime, Michael, anytime, whenever you want, you can you can uh, contact with me and we will share anytime. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Cause I wasn't sure where when it, where you, what you're doing during the day, you know, because but you're not working, but you're doing ministry. So it's, it's very, I, I can't believe the tension you guys are in right now. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, Yasha was in school. And, uh, is Sable in school too? I didn't hear that. No, Sable is uh, uh, going, uh, planning to go into the university or college, but they, she need a social security number. Right. So right now she don't have. Okay. So this, this is my humble request to all of you. Please keep my daughter in your prayers that okay. God will provide the all things which we need here. So uh, Yashwa is joined school just because of, you know, Craig Snyder 
uh, his son is uh, uh, is is a coach on that school and you know it's a small town where i live ossila it's a small town everybody everybody knows krikstad <laughs> krikstad is a famous man here yeah so they they give a waiver to yashwa so uh, if he has no social security number they give us a favor but yeah. in, a, in 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 a college level in a university level um, they can't do that yeah yeah exactly yeah we're going to pray for that for sure we're going to pray for your continued healing because i think emotionally there's much healing still to go on and for you guys to find your footing like this uh, I, I just can't imagine the aloneness away from your old structure, your old connections, family members to a country where you hardly know anybody, but yet you have spiritual brothers and sisters already that were already connected previously. So that's like a miracle that that was all put into play long before this happened. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Well, my friend, I'm going to stop the recording in just a second. Don't leave because I'm going to chat with you. But uh, thank you for taking time. And uh, I look forward to the next time you can share with Hope Fellowship. Hope Fellowship loves you. Uh, Sharon just sent me a text message just now. And I texted her say, hey, I'm talking to him right now. So she says hi to you. So I, I yeah. want you to know that right away. <laughs> that Bye. was great. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. Pleasure. Okay. Bye. Wow. I, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you received some enlightenment, um, kind of waking up to the freedom we have to share Jesus here, and not every country allows that. And so uh, I hope it spoke to your heart. Um, before we wrap up, I want to I want to put one request out. I've never done a request here before, um, but I've, I've had it in my heart, and I shared this on Sunday at Hope Fellowship. But I'd like to see if we can um, maybe help Robinson buy a laptop. I found out he has, uh, as you heard, they left everything in their apartment. They grabbed what they could, what they could carry, and got out and had to hide for a couple of weeks. So they left everything behind, and things are tough. And he still ministers in Pakistan in an Urdu language from, a, I think it's an iPad or something like that. That's it. Uh, no longer has a laptop and I live on my laptop like this this is where I do all my connecting communicating uh, video stuff and uh, for proper quality and stuff I think I think Robinson would be blessed and um, would do well to have a, a, an actual laptop so I'm wondering um, would you be will, be willing to help me here um, make a donation below for the laptop 100% uh, of it will go towards Robinson. Uh, I want to do it really quick. So I don't want to take a long time to do this. Uh, if you can do it this week, um, and, and within the next week to two weeks, max, um, whatever comes in, will get sent to Robinson and maybe it'll help his family too. So anything extra that comes in, it's going to go to Robinson anyway, uh, honestly. So whatever we can do to bless him and help their family. Um, I know well, listen, there are people that are helping financially in the U.S., and God bless them. Oh, my goodness. But there's still more that, that uh, needs to be done. And uh, every one of us has people in our lives that we can help. Um, and we're not called to help every single person. We're not, we're not capable of that. But wherever God lays on your heart, then support that. Um, so I'm asking you this time. Uh, let's let's help Robinson get a laptop and uh, let's do it quick and so we'll we'll send some finances down and let him have that other needs are being met um, this is just one that's on my heart this is just me asking Mike asking so um, and Robinson didn't ask for this he is he didn't know at all that I'm, I'm doing this but I felt led that this is a, an area and maybe it's because this is where I see a need. And so for me, I gravitate toward, Oh, he doesn't have this. Oh my goodness. So this is where my heart's at. Same thing happens with you for other people where you say, Oh, they don't have food. So you send food or give them money for food or they need a repair or something. You help pay for that. Like this is, this is how the Holy spirit can work in all of our lives. Um, and we don't have to manipulate anybody. We just ask. So I'm inviting you to join me on this one. Uh, links are below. Uh, do it in the next uh, week or two and so we can get this to him quick. 
that's it. I hope you were encouraged by that. And uh, I'm, I'm back regularly now. Uh, I took a couple weeks off. I wasn't sure I was going to do this morning. But when Robinson's story was shared on Sunday, I thought, I'm going to share it with you. This is an important one. And uh, maybe we can become a little more humbled in our approach uh, to when, when we think we have freedoms and rights. Um, Jesus laid them aside. And I love how Robinson said there, you know, Father, forgive them. So when we meet people that don't see, see things eye to eye, when we conflict with individuals about rights and freedoms and, and all that stuff, let's be gracious and kind. Let's, let's uh, um, be careful that the love of Christ becomes the peace in us as we respond and not just let our flesh react or our ego react. I'm speaking to myself here. <laughs> wink, wink. Oh, man. All right. That's it for today. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you all next week um, on Wednesday morning, 10 a, oh, sorry, 8 a.m. And if you want to join us on Sunday mornings for Hope Fellowship, uh, same station. So we stream to the exact same locations for both. So this is still growing in grace because um, all of us are still growing in grace. None of us have arrived. Look forward to seeing you next time. Join me next time on Still Growing in Grace for more good news. Enjoy previous episodes by downloading our podcast at growingingrace.ca. You can also visit hopefellowshipycc.com to find our service times and location. If this show has been an encouragement to you, please consider making a donation today at growingingrace.ca and help us keep spreading this good news. Thank you again for tuning in to Still Growing in Grace.